Um, like I was saying, my name is Ben Anderson, um, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, a project that we're uh, working on with Elastic, um, essentially collecting broadband network operational intelligence. Uh, before I go ahead and get started, I did want to let everybody know that we will be um, having Q&A um, after the session. So if you have any questions as we're going through um, the presentation here this afternoon, please pop them into the chat. Um, but again, uh, my name is Ben Anderson, and I'm the, pro the Director of Product Development for NRTC Managed Services. I've been with NRTC for a little over six years, and I've held various roles um, in product management and, and product development. Um, back in 2020, NRTC Managed Services CTO Chris Beetson formed a research and development team um, that we call Genesis. And the mission of the Genesis team is to build solutions that help our members overcome the complex technical problems um, that essentially bog down their businesses. And the first solution that we developed, operational intelligence, leverages the Elastic Stack to ingest, enrich, and obtain multiple data types that help our members run their businesses more effectively. So before I dive into um, the solution, which I'll overview for us here in a few minutes, um, I figured it'd be probably a good idea to share a little bit about NRTC and our members to help you kind of understand why this elastic solution is, is so necessary. So the NRTC stands for uh, the National Rural Telecommunications Cooperative. Um, we're a member owned cooperative made up of over 1500 rural uh, electric and telephone cooperatives. And our mission is to provide solutions that help our members bring the advantages of technology to, to rural America. Um, our vision is to be our members most trusted technology partner. Um, our electric cooperative members provide services to 75% of the continental US and 42 million people. And our telco members provide coverage to 45 states and 3 million access lines. Um, NRTC has offices in the United States and New Zealand and four core solution focuses. Um, the first one is managed services. Broadband solutions is the second. Mobile wireless is the third and smart grid is the fourth. Now I work for the managed services division, which encompasses things like network subscriber and, and support services, cybersecurity and streaming video solutions. So um, to help you understand a little bit about why NRTC exists and why we decided to build our first uh, or build this operational intelligence solution, I think it's important to, for you to understand a little bit about the challenges that face our membership. So traditionally speaking, it's difficult to attract skilled talent to rural America. Um, individuals with the technical expertise required to support uh, many of our members' businesses are often attracted to living and working in more urban areas. Um, even with some of the, the remote work benefits that we've seen here with the pandemic, um, the technical nature of the work necessitates that the individuals live and work in closer proximity to the networks that they serve. And, you know, because people um, maybe aren't as interested in living in rural America, that's, that's pretty tough for our members. Um, second challenge that they have is that there's generally a lack of expertise. And, you know, really that goes hand in hand with the lack of, of skilled talent. So just as it may be difficult to attract skilled talent, it's even more difficult to attract skilled talent with specialized expertise and advanced areas such as carrier grade switching and routing um, or data aggregation and analytics. I would say over the last 15 years or so, uh, a large number of you have decided to probably cancel your landline phone in favor of a cell phone or canceled your cable package in favor of over the top solutions like Netflix or Hulu. Um, those traditional telephone and television revenue streams have been steadily decreasing for our members. And um, the not many of our members have been able to come up with solutions to help offset the revenue losses um, that those have incurred, things like coming up with new products or services. So as a result, many of our members have had to, to operate their businesses um, in a more lean fashion than they had in the past. To further complicate this environment, um, our members operations produce tens to hundreds of millions of data points every day. Um, and that sheer volume of data in itself is just purely overwhelming for, for most people. Um, the fact that there's rarely someone with the expertise or skill to gather or interpret that information only really compounds the problem. So delivering telecommunication services um, often also requires a lot of non-interconnected vendor tools. Um, 
Many of our members have multiple infrastructure partners, different types of technology and other things that require many platforms for them to interact with. And that means essentially having multiple interfaces open or tabs open at a single time without any correlation of events between the various platforms themselves. So I hope it's becoming easy to see that with each of these problems, they're also very interconnected and they all impact each other. So the combination of each of the problems that we've talked about so far really just means that critical markers that happen within a network um, that could be used to identify whether a customer was having a poor experience um, or that some network component was nearing failure are often overlooked. And overlooking those types of, event, of events often leads to um, reactive misses that have major consequences like outages, poor customer experiences, and low customer satisfaction. So um, with the help of the Elastic Stack, we were able to assist our members with these problems using a solution that we call operational intelligence. So operational intelligence takes the data from each of our members, millions of data points and disparate non-interconnected systems. And we bring them all together to create context in the data that, that basically lives and breathes around them. Correlating the data helps our members identify the often missed needle in a haystack type events that can lead to negative customer experiences. Using Elastic's machine learning capabilities, we can identify and then alert on these anomalies to ensure that a technician can quickly address the problem before it becomes a customer impacting event. And as a result, our members are able to take a more proactive approach to, their, to managing their networks and can do so with fewer resources. When identified early, a lot of these anomalies can be addressed during normal maintenance windows or planned without any impact to the subscriber, leading to greater customer experiences. So um, at a real high level, the solution that we deploy for each of our members looks something like this. Um, you know, within each broadband provider network, there's a variety of different infrastructure components. All of those different components um, generate data. And so what we do is we ship the, the data using um, Logstash and Elastic over an SD-WAN tunnel into an environment that we have hosted exclusively for each member in, um, in Amazon. Um, from there, we provide the members with uh, rich visuals using Kibana um, and the ability to interpret and um, manipulate the data in ways that they see fit. Um, other ways that we grab data from the member networks involve using tools like Heartbeat, uh, Filebeat, uh, of course, the machine learning, which I talked about on the previous slide, and then a variety of um, what I would say special sauce that we incorporate with NRTC, things like um, automation, proprietary systems, and then workflows that ultimately produce an incredibly powerful and uh, environment for our members. So we replicate this type of, of deployment across each of our member environments um, to help keep data uh, separate and secure. Um, and ultimately that is, uh, has been a great um, solution for us so far. So to give you a little preview of some of what we've been able to do for our members, here's a screenshot of just a, a coverage map um, that uh, we use. You know, in these maps, we can show not only where the homes are um, and businesses of their customers, but also which ones are having problems you know, represented here with the houses that are colored in red. Um, we can also overlay the maps with fiber optic routes. Um, again, uh, overlaying multiple layers and having some insight into, into this. If a fiber cut took place at some point along this fiber line, you'd be able to clearly see that because all of these homes would turn red. We also enrich the maps with things like weather and other contextual data that really helps make this an impactful uh, tool for, for the members. Additionally, um, we ingest a variety of different data sources, um, like I said, and we incorporate them into singular dashboard views. Um, in this environment, this gives the members the ability to see not only what's happening at a high level view, um, but we also give them the ability to then drill down into individual parts of their network to get more meaningful telemetry. And views like this, we are able to incorporate um, different things like uh, the health of a particular piece of equipment, um, its signal strength compared to the package speeds that people are purchasing. Um, what's the weather doing in their particular locale and, and does that have an effect on any of the telemetry uh, associated with a particular infrastructure um, vendor? Additionally, um, we can bring in and, and use Elastic to do a lot of cool things in the background. Um, in this particular uh, screen, we were able to take data from a number of different sources. We were able to use Logstash and various filters to 
um, run math on uh, the data points that we were gathering, and then produce things like you know weighted capacity, oversubscription rates, um, utilization factors, all things that the members really are are saying and showing that that they want um, or use to be able to troubleshoot their environments. So you know, as a whole. Um, the operational intelligence um, platform has been a very popular service. We launched it uh, live with our members in August of 2020. So it's not even a year old from a GA perspective. Um, so far, we have about two dozen members who've signed on for the solution, and we expect roughly two dozen more um, to be on the platform or signed on for the platform by the end of 2023. So um, it's been a a great product, very well received by the members and, and something that they have been able to get a lot of benefit out of. Um, in addition, um, the success of this platform has allowed us to grow our team. Uh, the original kind of team behind this is, is uh, or was three people. We're now at six people and we're uh, planning to add another two to three positions, you know, by mid-year. So um, all the growth here has been very welcomed and it's exciting for our team to be able to, to be a part of this. Um, you know, from the Elastic perspective, we're always really excited about opportunities to learn about new techniques within Elastic and the stack. Um, conferences like this are always great because we can learn about all the cool and new things coming and ways that we can incorporate those features into our, you know, future operational intelligence releases. Um, additionally, something that we found that maybe wasn't something we intended initially was that um, internally we can benefit from this. So not only is this something that we can position for our members, but it's also something that we can turn on the data sets that we utilize internally to be able to glean better intelligence from our own data and the data from the various business units at NRTC. So um, I guess I'll uh, go ahead and kind of wrap um, for the time being. That's a very quick and dirty uh, overview of, of what we're working on. Um, one of the things I did want to say before we go to Q&A is just that um, as our team is growing, as I mentioned, we are adding positions to the team. So um, we have a posting that's live right now for a DevOps engineer. If that's something that you think you might be interested in, we'd, we'd love to hear from you. Um, that position will probably be open for an, another few days. So uh, please take advantage of the QR code here, send us your info, and, and we'd love to get to know you a little bit better. So um, with that, then I think uh, we could go ahead and open us up for Q&A. Uh, and it sounds like um, we don't have any questions at the moment. So just a quick reminder for everybody, um, in the chat, uh, please add any questions that you've got to um, to the chat for the session, and I can go ahead and address those. Uh, looks like we've got about four minutes left in our session here. So again, if there are any questions, um, anybody has um, for you know what we're working on happy to happy to take those uh, you know as we're kind of waiting here for any questions that come through I'll, I'll take an opportunity to just maybe scroll back through a couple of the slides um, of some of the screenshots and maybe go into a little bit more depth on some of what you know we're doing here. Um, and, you know, as many of you probably know, um, as as users of broadband services at home, you know, you have a modem uh, within your home and that modem oftentimes has a lot of lights on it. Um, you know, from the other perspective, the, per the perspective of your service provider, those lights translate into a bunch of data points that mean a, a lot or can mean a lot if the member is willing to kind of take advantage of the information that it's uh, telling them. So we gather that information, essentially the, the backend information that's generated by the network itself. And we create visuals like this one to help prioritize um, different data points that might be interesting for troubleshooting or identifying problems. So if you have fiber to the home at your house and you I identify that, um, or, or the service provider rather identifies that there's some problems with the fiber optic cabling themselves, then they'll probably see some changes in the TXRX power. That's something that we use machine learning to alert on. Um, you know, everyone, every customer has a little bit different signal strength. So what's less important to us um, is 
uh, or what's not as important to us is the actual numbers, but rather the changes in those numbers over time. And that's one of the really unique things that we can use machine learning to help us with is basically determining when um, light levels and other things like that change drastically. We can do the same thing with various errors that would indicate that there's probably something wrong with the termination at your home or an interface um, uh, you know, at the service provider side. So being able to notify the members on a daily basis or in real time of these events as they happen, enable um, the members, your service provider to be able to proactively reach out to you and tell you about problems that exist proactively run a truck to your home to re-terminate the cabling, um, things like that. And in many instances, you don't even need to be notified or engaged of that type of activity. Someone comes out during the day, they make the fix, and then you know you don't even really know any different. And that's the kind of experience that a lot of our members want to be able to provide to their subscribers is essentially the this feeling that they want to have uh, knowledge and visibility into the problems that could arise and have the ability to take care of them before you even, um, even know about it. You know, additionally, um, like I'd said, different infrastructure produces different information. Many of our members utilize wireless infrastructure. Um, wireless infrastructure is very, uh, susceptible to things like weather and humidity. And so this pink line here is a great representation of how weather might be affecting the ability for a subscriber to be able to get the package speed they purchased, in this case, 100 megabits. So our system does things like notify the, the um, member of these types of customers so they can proactively reach out and, and try to solve the problem. So um, I think we're kind of gonna wind down here. Um, looks like we have a little bit less than a minute left. Please, if you have any questions, we'd love to hear them, but um, you know, barring none, I want to say thank you again for giving me the opportunity to share a little bit about what we've been working on. Um, if you have any questions for me, please don't hesitate to reach out to me directly using the email on the slide here. Or if you're interested in applying for our DevOps engineer position, um, definitely take advantage of the QR code um, here on the screen.